will be your nest right here, and you can start checking this out against the schematic. Mr. Riley, thank you very much for giving me the chance. It's more than anybody's done in a long time. Yeah, do you understand? It's just a trial. Oh, Marty, this is Cliff Norris. Hey, how are you? Hey, Marty. Got any questions, you just ask Marty. Thank you. I got something I really want to show you. Well, I'm tied up at the museum right now. Uh, listen, how about tomorrow morning? I'm busy. Uh, I've got to pick up my un unemployment money. Uh, I'll be there in half an hour. Uh, that'll be 3.30, okay? Thanks, Alex. Just what the hell is he doing? Mr. Friedkin plans to make this into a men's store. Well, tell him to knock it off. Look, Mr. Cummings, I know you think of me as some kind of hard-hearted Simon Legree, but I've really been most lenient. Now, I know you've had it rough, a boiler blowing up and unexpected bills, but you're almost four months behind on your lease, and I've got bills of my own to me. Well, but wait a minute. Now, what about our agreement that I had until the end of the month? <sighs> Mr. Cummings, just what do you think you can possibly do in the next three days you haven't been able to do in four months? Get you your lousy money! Right there, by the soldering unit. Thank you. It's one of my problems you can't feel when you drop something. Listen, I've been watching your work. You're okay. Thank you. What are you doing? Another hour till quitting time. For you. I'm on trial. Or was. No one told you to stop. They didn't have to. I don't know what he's saying. He's saying he's too slow. The insurance rates are going to go right through the roof. Ramsey had rocks in his head for giving me a chance in the first place. I think you've got it all wrong. <laughs> Never said before. Cliff. It's been nice working with you, Marty. Hey. You really know your stuff. Look, I really wanted it to work. I could have been happy there. I liked the guy who was working next to me. Fantastic equipment. There's a half a ham and cheese left. I don't want nothing to eat. You missed a turn. those electrical plants today. I can't stall them any longer. The meeting is set for five. The uh, camera's under the seat. What about getting in? You're not, you're not cleared on the museum security list anymore. I called my ex-boss. He's expecting me. What about the rope? How are you going to rig up the rope? Once I shake Alex, I'm home free. <laughs> what about me? What am I going to be like in there? You want to call it off? Doesn't you know Vic, you're lucky. You're really lucky. Things don't touch you. Well, Cliff, you've got less to worry about than the next guy. 
You won't leave any fingerprints. Busy around here. Oh, hey, man, like he's been bedlam around here the last couple of days. They moved the opening of the museum up. Hey, uh, how's the laundromat? The same. Nothing at five thousand dollars wouldn't cure. Yeah. Still haven't been able to get that loan, huh? Yeah. Five thousand bucks. <laughs> That's not asking for the moon. Do you know anyone with that kind of money who'd like to go into business with the handicap? Yeah. Well, keep looking. You'll find somebody. I'll call Mr. Langley and tell him you're here. Uh, don't bother. I'll find him, Al. Thanks. See you later. Yeah. Hey, what happened? My breaking mechanism. The bolts must have sheared off. Oh, yeah. Well, those are going to have to be replaced. Al, is there any way you could fix me up for now? Yeah, hey, there may be some bolts in the maintenance room. There must be. Listen, I'll be right back. You got them. Of course, a couple of them are still doing the thing in state pen. I thought maybe your writer friend would be able to get up there and talk to them. He's still checking out the names you gave him. Well, I got the list right here on my desk. I was going to mail it to you. Ha! I handled it. I sure appreciate that. Oh, listen, I'll get the list. Now. Uh, you got a cigarette? 
No, I gave him up a year ago last August. I'll go see if Joe left some in the desk. Anyway, Hal, you bet. Oh, Hal, uh, you forgot to lock the door. Huh? I'll be sure. Could have sworn I locked it. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Collins. make somebody a good Jewish mother, Alex. <laughs> oh, the reason I'm looking so terrible is that because I've been slaving over these for the past five nights. Uh, innovations to the Lincoln Bank vault's locking arm. Oh, I wish you'd told me. It would have saved you a lot of work. The Lincoln Bank job got scrapped by the merger. Turner decided it wasn't profitable. Gee, I'm sorry, Vic. <laughs> well, par for the course. Hey, maybe the trip isn't wasted after all. Do you feel like needing him? Turner? Yeah, Tiny might be just right. He's in a rare mood. The museum's been patting him on the back for the great security job the company's done. He just might feel expansive enough to give you your job back. <laughs> Come on. Yes, we'll be waiting. Thank you. I just heard. Everything's proceeding smoothly. The armored car should be here shortly. Good. Uh, Kevin Turner, this is Victor Cummings. Kevin is the vice president for All Safe. How do you do? Alex is a great fan of yours. He says you're one of the finest burglary analysts in the country. I am finally getting that sense of exaggeration under control, huh, Alex? Oh, that's healthy. <laughs> Alex, would you phone Mr. Bradley and tell him we'll be there in five minutes, surely? Well, you have talent. Some of your designs for the museum's window alarms were quite innovative. I trust Alex explained why we had to let you go, explained fully. This merger between Allsafe and Langley Security produced so many duplications of jobs. Now, my role of hatchet man was personally distasteful, but unavoidable. I did everything I could to keep you on. I mean that. Well, that must sound patronizing. Yes, it does. Well, I can understand how you must be feeling. Bitter, angry as a tenor. We just met. And frankly, I don't see how you could possibly know how I feel about a damn thing. No, of course not. Well, good luck, Mr. Cummings. Let's go. through Vietnam without a scratch. It was an accident. A uh, car accident. It happened shortly after he was discharged. So uh, Vic has no disability pension? No, not a cent. Is anyone helping him? Hmm. The fact of the matter is he's living with two other handicapped men and they're no better off than he is. Ah, magnificent.
$15 violation? <laughs> That's only money. That which we don't have. But it was a fantastic day, huh? Be like fog. <laughs> you are really warped. Flying to a blind man. How did Cliff do? Take a guess. Look, you don't have to take me. We can go home. Are you kidding and disappoint Terry? No, sir. What's happening, Vic? Glad you asked. My horoscope says that the adverse conditions confining me will soon improve, and before the end of the month, there will be nothing but gaiety and happiness. The 30-day miracle. Handicap to madcap. <laughs> Famous Victor Shuffle. Yeah. Ask for a straight answer, and you get sidetracked. You want to know what's happening, all right? Well, good. Out of work. Has been for eight months. Me? Also unemployed with no prospects. A laundromat. A dream. It's more broken down than we are. The banks won't give us a loan. The loan companies bolt their doors when they see us coming. In a nutshell, we're so far down, we're below bottom. And that is what is happening. But that is not what I'm talking about. Now, what's going on, Vic? Let me in on it, huh? Whatever it is you're doing. Doing nothing. That is our problem. Yeah. Oh, this is very novel, Mr. Cummings. <laughs> Usually I detest meetings such as this. They always seem to end up in drafty bus terminals. Plays havoc with my sinuses, but this is... Oh, my. Isn't she attractive? skated since I was a boy. I used to live there, Lake Michigan. Marvelous country. You familiar with that area? No. Oh, there she goes again. <laughs> this detailing is superb. Puts Sir Willie Sutton to shame. I feel as if I know the museum by heart. <laughs> Robot, sir. Uh, we'll be tomorrow. Ooh, absolutely positive. You have a way of ripping off that statue. Oh, this chocolate is superb. It's delicious. Uh, about the money. Too early to divide the spoils, dear boy. Way too early. I have to chat with my associates. As soon as I learn something, I'll be in touch. When will that be? <laughs> Patience. I'll give you a ring tonight. I lost my sight. You finished short in the amateur regions. I think I showed you a picture, Cliff. You know the blonde? Built? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, indeed. Anyway, uh, anyway, Terry's got that same, same fantastic movement. Same poise. Balance. She, uh, she asked me over on Friday. Yeah. Hey, uh, how long have you been working on Terry? Well, I was beginning to worry that you had been losing your savoir faire. It's a pity it's not in Braille. I might explain a few things. Do you have any idea what silence means to a blind man? Or whispering or scribbling? You two make, make poor conspirators. Less. Okay. Now, I've been shut out long enough. I want to know what's going on. We're planning a heist. <laughs> you know, mentally I had a list of things that it could be. But robbery was on the bottom. Not because it was the least likely. Because I hoped it was. What kind of a heist? Franklin Museum. <laughs> oh. Let's see. I guess 
Vic provided the idea. Vic's good at that kind of thing. Cliff's providing the way. Who's providing the means? Rose. We are going to sell the plans less and we are going to get enough money to open the laundromat again. Then you've actually, actually talked to these pros. They're going to call tonight. Why'd you shut me out? It's pretty obvious, isn't it? I just didn't want to listen to a million and one reasons why we shouldn't do it. I just didn't want a hassle. And I don't want one now. What happens if these guys get caught and they spill everything? We go to prison. <laughs> Have you ever thought of what that would be like? Yeah, if I go, it wouldn't be the worst thing that's happened to me. You, uh, you better answer it. That's why the mob doesn't like to be kept waiting. Hello. Yes, Walter. Yeah, tomorrow, the same time's fine. Same place? Oh, uh... Yeah, just a minute, I... Gotta have a pencil. Okay, shoot. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll be there. Vic, I've known you a long time. You're cynical, but way down deep, you're sensible. And this, what you're doing, it doesn't make sense. Les, where the hell have you been living? Our lives don't make sense. All three of us put together barely make one man. I don't know, maybe it's easier for you. Maybe, maybe you still believe in miracles. But just stop for one minute, one second. Think about what our lives are going to be three years from now. Five years, ten years from now. All three of us are going to be sitting right here talking about things that are never going to happen. Something had to be done. Good luck. Uh, next time we have a family discussion, let's make sure we serve on plastic plates. You can't I'm just a minute. We're all waiting for you in the lobby, sir. Mr. Stone just arrived. Well, tell him I'll be right there. We're running a check on the museum security for the insurance company, so you can see this really is a bad time. Take a minute, Mr. Turner. Uh, as I was saying, I did you an injustice. Look, yes. I've got to go. I'll go down to the end of the corridor with Mr. you. Mr. Cummings, you probably think I'm only apologizing because I want my job back. No, not at all. Well, I do want my job back. Oh, not right now, but maybe later if the company expands. Now, Mr. Yes. Cummings, I really... You see, I don't want you to write me off because of what I said yesterday. I just want you to look at my record when a time comes. I was good at what I did, Mr. Turner. Yes, you were. You are. Now, I really do have to go. Thanks for hearing me out. were checked out by myself. Personally, Mr. Stone, I feel that this system is foolproof. The day this museum gets robbed is the day the pigs sprout wings. I'll keep an eye out for flying pork then. 
No system is foolproof. door in the museum locks and bolts from the inside. Now, unless you're admitted by a guard, there's no way to get in from the outside. Every year, my company puts out about 10 million due to inside jobs. Our security force has been very carefully screened, Mr. Stone. As an extra safeguard, each guard's work schedule is constantly shuffled and changed at the last minute. Well, what about the windows? This way. Once the connection between the two metal strips is broken, the alarm activates. Nothing can prevent it. Only be a moment. Well, what do you think? You got an A for volume. This door opens precisely at nine, shuts exactly at three. Now, once closed, it would take over two tons of TNT to blast it open. that you've already seen, and wind up in this room. Try and grab again. It. 
Give up, George. Within this framework, small, high-intensity lights are embedded. Now, their beams go from one point to another, creating a whole web of light all around. They're invisible to the eye, of course, but should any one individual strand be broken? Well, you saw what happened. The statue is bolted to the stand, and the stand is cemented to the floor. And the lights and the stand's alarm system are both controlled from the police station. <laughs> we get Ray up there. What about the guards? Well, he shouldn't have any trouble coming down along here to this side door. Now, there's a guard there, but he makes a routine security check of the first floor at exactly 745. He's gone for five minutes. Mm -hmm. Now, these are all the keys, huh? That's right. Now, what's the open sesame with the time lock? Good. <clears throat> the trick? The particular system is to alter the amount of bolts that go through these wires. Uh, this is going to get complicated, isn't it? I can't even change the light bulb. That's how much I know. <laughs> Ray, take a look at him. Let Ray check around. Now, let's talk about figures. Okay, 50-50 uh, uh, with a $10,000 advance. <laughs> no way, no way. We're taking all the risks. 70-30. And we've got the plan. 60-40. You know what kind of a sentence we're facing? Ten years of peace. 65-35. Okay. Plus the advance. It'll work. It'll work. Good. So where'd you lose those? In the war? No. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> what are we talking about here? The advance. Oh, yeah, 10,000. I don't ordinarily put up front money. I'd have to hear the whole plan first. You know, you could be selling us a lot of window dressing. How do we know you got a way of snatching that statue? We've got a way. What you're saying so doesn't make it so. And nothing personal. Now, Mr. Cummings, <laughs> let's not be hasty. Surely there's some way out of this impasse. I'd be a fool to tell them all the plan. Nothing personal. Did he kill someone? You believe him? Yes. I think he's bugging. Where do we go from here? I'm not the only pros in town. We make new contacts. We found them, didn't we? It's time, Vic. We don't have any more time. We're going to lose the laundromat. And if we lay this out to them, we'll lose the plan. We'll have to take that down. If you'll tell them, I will.
Oh, it uh, went great. They liked everything. Uh, they had trouble meeting our requirements. Olympic rope climber, electronic wizard, and a dentist. In short, they thought we were nuts. The soon-to-be-open Franklin Museum has everything anyone could possibly want of a museum, including the rarely seen but legendary Great Captain. Originally a present to King Philip of Spain, the statue is solid gold and stands a little over three feet high. Yes, ladies, that is a real diamond. 260 and a half carats. The Great Captain will be on exhibit for six weeks only and will then be taken to the Louvre in Paris. <laughs> Crazy, but if you both hear me out, you see we got a 50-50 chance. A chance this. Three top professionals turned it down because it was too tough. Three whole human beings. Just take a look at these modifications I've made. Let's... Will you talk to this lunatic? Uh, with these changes, we can pull it off, believe me. <laughs> Last time I believed you, I, all I had to do was take a couple of pictures I wound up down in the basement scared to death. I know, I know, but this time I'll be with you. You won't be alone for a second. Do you hear what he's saying? Look, I've, spent, you a, tap? I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out a way for only two of us to do it, but it can't be done. We can't pull it off. It has to be all three of us. I need your help. Well, that's a first. I never heard you ask for help before. Well, how about it? Thanks a lot. I'm thinking about it. Oh, I'll kill you if you're putting me on. <laughs> First robbery, now murder. You're becoming quite a thug. I think I'm serious. Hey, why the sudden turnaround? No reason that it makes sense is... Just that maybe you're right, Vic. Maybe we don't make sense. For two and a half years, we tried to do all the right, sensible things. You never asked for charity, you never asked for pity. But every time we reached out, we got kicked in the teeth. I think they owe us that chance. I think we have the right to collect. Besides, going in with 50-50 odds is the first time we've had it so good. Great, great. Okay, I'll, uh, one thing. I, uh, I might have been just a a little over-optimistic on those odds. They might be just a little higher. <laughs> start throwing caution to the wind, he, he starts becoming honest. Tell me about the plan. <laughs> okay, now look.
almost 7.30. We're going to test the alarm any minute now.
guard's coming. He's at the door. Security. Officer Cooper speaking. How? How this is uh, Vic. Uh, Vic Cummings. Oh, hey, Mr. Cummings. Uh, look, Hal, uh, I know you're on duty and, uh, well, uh, I, I don't want to bother you, but my writer friend, uh, Mike, is here and, well, he'd kind of like to thank you for, uh... For all the help you've been. Yeah, well, that's not necessary. Uh, I'll put him on. Just a minute. No, you've got to. You've got to take his mind off that basement. Anything. Uh, hello, Mr. Cooper. Mr. Cooper, Mike here. Oh, hi, Mike. Uh, Vic's been telling me a lot about you. It's nice to meet you. Uh, listen, that, uh, that book sounds exciting. That's a thing. <laughs> When's it going to be finished? Oh, it'll be sometime yet. Well, uh, uh, if I can be of any more help. You know, uh, like I told Vic, I was on the police force, you know, bunco, uh, arson. Homicide, you name it. I certainly am pretty well acquainted with all the pros. <laughs> okay, thanks again. Uh, I'll give you back a bit. Hello, Hal. Look, uh, I won't bother you anymore. I just wanted to thank you. Anytime, Vic. Yeah.
making his rounds. I got the electrical circuit with the braille code on it. I got the soldering iron. I checked out the back of your car, Vic. <laughs> Incredible achievement. Where'd we go? Oh, a lot of little things, like uh, you're asking me the names of the pros. Like the other day, when you told me I'd forgotten to bolt the door, I hadn't forgotten. The convenient phone call last night. Like the police picking up the caster in the corridor. Uh, like the... you want me to go on? No, no. Now you want in, huh? I thought about that, Vic. But that's not what I want. Yeah. What do you want? A glory. Oh, there's a lot of glory in putting us away. I thought about that too, Vic, but I don't want that either. You mean, uh, you're going to keep quiet about it? I went to see the district attorney. Now, I gave him a hypothetical situation. I said, supposing a bunch of handicapped guys pulled this job off just to prove a point, but now they're willing to give the stuff back. What, as the district attorney, would you do? Well, he said, given those circumstances, I might be persuaded to drop the charges. Providing you give the stuff back. To what we've been through, you think we're going to give them back? You have no choice, Vic. Those stones are red hot. You can't sell them. You can't cut them. You can't fence them. You can't... You're certainly in no position to run with them. No, you can hide them. In fact, we've already hidden them. Vic! If I walk out this door, you're going to spend one hell of a long time in jail. And if you're counting on a 12-handkerchief jury, forget it. You don't give those stones back, they'll throw the book at you. Okay, so it's jail. So it's maybe seven, ten years. But we'll walk out of there rich. Vic, all we wanted was enough to make that laundromat run again. That's not what we're going to prison for. Now, tell them we'll give them back. No, no, you said it yourself. 
We're entitled to it. If we give that back, we've got nothing. Get it zero. Cliff, you want to do it Vic's way? You want to spend ten years in jail? co-sign that note, I'm not doing it out of pity. I mean, if you guys grew up, I'm out 5,000 bucks. Now take me to the laundromat. Oh, well, what's the use in going there, Hal? I mean, well, let's face it, you're a bad risk. <laughs> you're making something out of nothing. I just want to find out where I'm going to bring my laundry. Richard Burton stars in our gripping war drama tomorrow morning at 10. Radon Rommel tells the story of the World War II battle against Rommel's Panzer Division in Libya. Radon Rommel, our morning movie tomorrow. And just a reminder, The Three Musketeers is coming. <laughs>